I think if you have a look to what 3D was uh, or is until today uh, with glasses, this is an experience which basically is a little bit frustrating because there are many, I would say, roadblocks uh, with uh, 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 3D with glasses. One of them, for instance, is just the need of glasses. You need to wear glasses. And if you think about the experience at home, the fact that you may, you know, when you watch a movie together with your friends or your family, talking with each other, it's a little bit, it's a little bit strange talking with glasses. Uh, there are also some many other factors, you know, the, the, the fact that you lose, you lose a lot of brightness through the glasses. Uh, and basically, the experience is a little bit deceptive. And we, Dolby, decided a few years ago to launch this project with uh, Philips, developing a glasses-free uh, technology, because we had this vision that for the 3D to succeed on the long run, we would have to propose a glasses-free technology. The main drawback with the technologies which were existing a few years ago, as you pointed out, is the fact that if you remember that you need to find a kind of sweet spot you know watching at the tv and uh, this is something which is really annoying in terms of experience because when you are at home in your sofa you can't just be you know uh, at a fixed position watching tv so we ask ourselves what needs to be done so that we can remove this uh, sweet spot thing and this is where the ID can, came to uh, you know, work with, uh, with Philips. And when in the past you had these technologies you were talking about with, uh, uh, let's say, around 10 views, today we have a technology uh, with Dolby which allows to uh, display up to 28 views. If you want to implement uh, an autostereoscopic glasses-free system, with, uh, I would say, enough comfort, enough viewing comfort, then you have to rely on high resolution displays. That's the first point. The other point is, and I was, took, and I was looking to the, uh, the TVE uh, uh, 4K pictures which are demonstrated here today. Uh, these are very good pictures. And you have this sense of um, being there. Uh, it's not the same kind of immersiveness. 3D provides you with the feeling of depth with the feeling of relief but with 4k you have different uh, 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 perception it's much more details uh, and uh, really you have the feeling that you are uh, yeah you are there the other thing which i believe is important is the display size with 3d glasses or glasses free with glasses or glasses free you have a tv set which is i would say in conventional sizes around 50 let's say up to 60 inches uh, with 4K, the direction we foresee today within the industry is very large displays. So once again, and very large viewing angle. And once again, I think that this is a different experience. I won't say that this is exactly the same kind of experience, but it's different uh, immersion. And probably that in the future, this sense of presence being there with very large screens and this sense of relief and depth would be combined so that you can really have the greatest immersion. There's no great audiovisual experience without sound. And you can uh, have a look to many studios which have been done uh, in the past or even very recently. If the sound is great, you may feel that the picture is better. So it's, you know, talking about things just in a single dimension, just video on one side and audio on the other side is not the right thing to do. You need to think about a great audiovisual experience and sound is at least 50% of that experience. What's the right uh, sound format with 3D and even 4K? Well, at least, you know, multi-channel 5.1 or even 7.1 is already a great experience. This is providing you with a, with a great surround, with a great immers immersiveness. Uh, in the future, we foresee um, technologies, probably, this is still something which is under discussion in standardization bodies. Uh, the Japanese, for instance, are talking about a 20.2 uh, system. Is this the direction the industry needs to take? This is something we need to think about. Uh, are we sure that there's a willingness uh, from people to have much more speakers into their, into their home, much more wires. 
So we believe that uh, the, the future of sound is probably not at necessarily increasing this number of speakers. It's more about providing with much more flexibility.